We're now looking at exercise 18-12B. Exer this exercise deals with a long-term construction contract uh, and we're going to account for the contract first under the percentage of completion method and secondly under the completed contract method. So to refresh your memory, let's go back to the class discussion over long-term construction contracts and let's hit the highlights of the two methods of accounting beginning first with the percentage of completion method. So under the percentage of completion method the company recognizes profit on the construction job based upon the degree of the job that's finished. So if you complete 10 percent of the job you're entitled to recognize 10 percent of the profit on the job. The construction cost that you incur during the year plus any gross profit that you uh, have earned on the job and reported on the income statement are accumulated in an inventory account called construction and process. Now typically on a construction contract you're going to be allowed to uh, make progress billings to the customer as you do work on the job and those uh, progress billings are going to be accumulated in a contra inventory account called billings on construction in process. This percentage uh, of completion method is the default GAAP method for accounting for long-term contracts. However, in order to apply the percentage of completion method, you have to be able to estimate the degree of job progress. And in circumstances when you can't do that, you use the completed contract method. And you can see I simply copied here the same little blurb I had on the percentage of completion uh, slide, deleting two components, or deleting one component, which is the plus gross profit earned to date. Essentially, the accounting is very similar. As we'll see, uh, it's nearly the same. The only difference is there's no journal entry pre prepared at the end of the year to pick up gross profit earned on the job. Uh, under completed contract method, we delay recognizing profit on the job until the job is finished. Okay, so let's go back and let's uh, take a stab at this problem. Okay, so the first thing I want to do skip this section A and let's go do the basic debits and credits uh, to involve uh, involved in recognizing the job cost as they are incurred, the progress billings and the collections on account because those three journal entries are going to be exactly the same regardless of whether you use percentage of completion or completed contract and you can see on the right side here I've got uh, construction in process T account set up and a billings on construction and process T account set up as well and as we make the entries here those T accounts will be updated with those with the amounts of the entry so let's see we're told here in 2014 that our cost incurred to date is 600,000 since 2014 is the first year of the contract uh, what that implies is that we incurred six hundred thousand dollars worth of job cost this year so the entry to record that in 2014 would be to debit construction and process for the amount of job cost that we incurred that year and then credit whatever assets we consumed whether it was raw material concrete inventory or whether we in paid cash or whether we incurred some sort of payable that would be the offset to the to the entry. Okay, so in 2015, we're told that <coughs> our cumulative costs to date are 1,435,000. Now, that cumulative cost incurred to date reflects the cost that we incurred in 2014 plus the cost that we incurred in 2015. Well, since at the end of 2014 we had incurred $600,000 worth of cost, the cost that we incurred in 2015 must be the difference between the cumulative cost that we had incurred through the end of 2015 of $1,435,000 and the cumulative cost that we had incurred through the end of 2014 which was $600,000. The difference between those two amounts 
is 835,000. So we're going to debit construction progress 835 and credit the material. I think I've got an extra zero there. And credit the material, cash, payable, etc. account to reflect whatever we consumed in generating that cost. End of 2016, cumulative cost incurred to date 2.1 million. At the end of 2015, cumulative cost incurred to date was 1,435,000. So the difference between the 2.1 million at the end of 2016 and the 1,435,000 at the end of 2015, that difference is 665,000. That 665,000 represents the job cost that we incurred in 2016, and we're going to book that here. And you can see that the T account has been updated for each of those, those journal entries and the balance determined at the end of each year. Okay, the next part of the entry is to record the progress billings. Now, as mentioned, we typically on a long-term construction contract will bill our customer periodically uh, as we incur costs. And what we're told here is the billings to date at the end of 2014 was 100,000. So in 2014, since that was the first year of the job, uh, we, in we obviously incurred 100,000 or billed $100,000 uh, progress billings to our customers. So debit 100,000, accounts receivable, credit billings on construction and process 100,000. Again, this billing on construction process, that's a contra asset account. You'll see how that's reported on the financial statements in a second. Uh, at the end of 2015, our cost to date, sorry, our billings to date were 500000 At the end of last year, our billings to date was 100000 So during 2015, we must have billed 500 minus 100 or $400,000 to our customers. So debit accounts receivable 400,000 credit process uh, billings on construction process 400,000 and finally at the end of 2016 our billings to date were 2.5 million um, at the beginning of 2016 or the end of 2015 our billings to date were 500,000 so we must have billed 2.5 million less 500,000 we must have sent bills out totaling $2 million rather uh, during 2016. So debit accounts receivable, $2 million. And credit billings on construction and process, $2 million. Okay, the next thing to pick up are our cash collections on those billings. So in 2014, we collected $100,000 cash on our progress billings. So debit cash, $100,000. Credit accounts received, $100,000. In 2015, our collections to date were $300,000. We had collected 100000 up through the beginning of the year, so our collections in 2015 was 300 minus 100 or 200000 So debit cash, 200000 Credit accounts receivable, 200000 And in 2016, our collections to date were $2 million. We collected 300000 cumulatively to date at the beginning of 2016 or the end of 2015. So in 2016 we collected 1.7 million dollars worth of cash on our receivables. Okay, everything that we have done so far is exactly what you would do if regardless of whether it was percentage of completion or completed contract. 
these first three journal entries would be exactly the same regardless of the method of accounting used. The, the thing that's going to be different percentage of completion versus completed contract is under the percentage of completion there is an adjusting journal entry made at the end of each accounting period to pick up the profit that you earned that year based upon the degree of progress that you would made on that job. So the next step in the process is to calculate the degree of progress that you've made on the job. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go up here and we're going to enter into our spreadsheet here the cumulative cost that we've incurred to date at 2014 the cumulative cost that we incurred to date were 600,000 and we're going to add to that the cost that we think it's going to take to finish the job out at the end of 2014 our best guess was that it was going to take us another 1.4 million dollars to finish the job we're going to drop that in here so at the end of 2014 our best guess as to the total cost to complete this job start to finish is simply the sum of the cost that we've incurred to date plus estimated cost to complete the job so our best guess is going to take us two million dollars to finish this job so we are in terms of cost 30 percent done with the job that 30 percent was calculated by our dividing cumulative cost to date by estimated total cost on the job of two million dollars okay we're going to do the same thing at 2015 we're going to go up here and pick up our cumulative cost incurred to date for 2015 that's one million four hundred and thirty five thousand and at the end of 2015 our best guess is it's going to take us six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to finish the job we're going to drop that in here so our best guess at the end of 2015 of the total cost to start to finish to complete this job is the cost that we've incurred to date plus what we estimate it's going to cost us to finish the job or our best guess now the total cost start to finish on the job is two million uh, fifty thousand dollars so based upon cost incurred to date as a fraction of estimated total job cost we're 70 percent done with the job then we're going to do the same thing at the end of 2016 total cost to date from up here two million one hundred thousand dollars estimated cost to complete well we're done with the job no more cost to complete the job so total job cost start to finish now this is actual not estimated because we're done it is 2.1 million fraction of the job that we've completed well cost to date divided by total job cost 100 percent done okay so now we've determined what our our cost is uh, uh, what our degree of progress is on the job so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply the percent of the job that we're done that, that we've completed times the contract price amount of 2.5 million so for the first year contract price amount of 2.5 million times 30 percent done with the job so we've earned seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of revenue on this job based upon degree of progress done now next thing how much revenue have we recognized in prior years on this job? Well, none. So, the revenue that we recognized this year on our income statement is simply the difference between earned to date revenue minus revenue previously reported on the income statement. Okay, so we had incurred or, or earned rather seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of uh, revenue to date, and we're going to report that much of revenue on our income statement this year. Construction costs incurred this year, uh, based upon our 
journal entry below, we said that we incurred $600,000 of construction cost uh, this year. So the amount of profit that we're going to recognize this year is simply the difference between revenue to be recognized, less construction cost incurred, or $150,000. Okay, now let's go ahead with the calculation for the next two years. So revenue earned to date is the contract amount of 2500000 times the percent of the job that we're finished, that we've completed, that's 70%, or the revenue earned to date is $1,750,000. From that, we're going to subtract the revenue that we've recognized in prior years which is the 750000 that we recognized in 2014. So the amount of revenue to be recognized this year is the difference, or $1 million. The construction cost that we incurred in 2015 is this 835000 here. So the profit to be recognized this year is the difference between revenue to be recognized this year and construction cost incurred this year, or $165,000. And finally, for 2016, we're going to multiply the contract price of $2,500,000 times the percentage of the job that we finished, which is 100%. So the revenue that we've earned to date is $2.5 million. From that, we're going to subtract the revenue that we've recognized in past years, we recognized one million in 2015, and we recognized 750,000 in 2014. So the cumulative rev rev the revenue that we've cumulatively recognized is one million seven hundred fifty thousand. So revenue recognized this year is to be recognized this year seven hundred fifty thousand. The construction cost that we incurred in 2016 is 665000 So the amount of profit that we're going to recognize in 2016 is 85000 OK, so now let's scroll down and let's prepare this last journal entry, which again is a journal entry that is prepared only in the case of percentage of completion. It's the entry made at the end of each year to pick up the profit for that year. So the revenue that we're going to recognize in 2014, we calculated up here to be 750,000. I'm sorry, right here to be 750,000 dollars. The cost of construction that we're going to recognize as an exp uh, on the income statement is. The $600,000 amount that we actually incurred that year. And then the difference between those two amounts, the $750 versus the $600, that $150 there, is what we're going to recognize or what we're going to debit rather to construction and process. Remember, the construction and process account includes construction cost incurred plus profit that you pick up under the percentage of completion method. So, for 2015, the revenue that we're going to recognize on the job, we calculated up here to be a million dollars. The cost of construction that we're going to recognize, we calculated up here to be 835,000. So the entry to construction and process to representing the profit that we're going to recognize that year is 165000 And finally, in 2016, the revenue that we're going to recognize that year is 750000 The cost of construction that we're going to report over on the income statement, we've already determined up here to be 665000 And of course, the difference is simply the profit that we're going to recognize that year. So let's see how our income statement is going to look now as a result of this last journal entry. So on the income statement of 2014, we're going to have revenue of $750,000. Cost of construction, 
cost of construction of six hundred thousand dollars with gross profit on job of a hundred and fifty of a hundred and fifty thousand our income statement for 2015 is going to show revenue of a million dollars cost of construction of eight hundred thirty five thousand and of course the difference between those two is going to be the gross profit that we're going to recognize which is the same as the entry to the CIP account there for 2016 revenue seven hundred fifty thousand cost of construction six hundred sixty five thousand the difference between those two is our gross profit on the job so here's what our income statement is going to look like across these three years based on percentage of completion and again here's the CIP account the construction process T account with all these journal entries booked as we went through here's the billings account with all the all uh, these journal entries booked um, okay now on the balance sheet on the balance sheet the accounts receivable account is going to reflect what uh, what is due us and so let's see I don't have an account receivable account set up so here let's see we debited accounts receivable a hundred thousand dollars let's just set us up an account receivable T account okay so we debited accounts receivable here and then we credited accounts receivable here so our balance in accounts receivable at the end of the first year oops is that right let's go up here and see yeah that's right balance of accounts receivable at the end of the first year was nothing so we got accounts receivable here construction and process let's see the balance in our construction and process T account up here at the end of 2014 was $750,000 the balance in the billings account at the end of 2014 was this 100,000 so on the inventory section of the balance sheet we're going to show construction and process in excess of billings on contract of six hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars let's see accounts receivable for 2015 okay we had a zero balance going forward and we debited accounts receivable up here for four hundred thousand and we credited accounts receivable in 2015 for cash collections of two hundred thousand so the balance of accounts receivable at the end of 2015 is two hundred thousand dollars okay so that two hundred thousand is going to show up here and then on the inventory section of the balance sheet our balance in construction and process at the end of 2015 is one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars so we're going to drop that in here The balance in the billings account at the end of 2015 was 500,000, so we're going to drop that in here. So under the inventory section of the balance sheet, we're going to show cost in excess of billings of uh, what is that? 1,250,000 dollars. Actually, it should say cost and profit in excess of billings. And finally, let's see the last year um, we've got to figure out our accounts receivable okay so the last year we started the year we started 2016 with a two hundred thousand dollar balance and we debited accounts receivable for two million and we credited accounts receivable here for one million seven hundred thousand so the balance in accounts receivable, what we started the year with, plus what we billed during the year, 
minus the cash collections. So we've got what five hundred thousand dollars of that still due us. In terms of our construction process account, uh, our construction process account, the balance is two point five million right there. And the billings account has a balance. Okay, what you didn't see is I just paused the video. I realized I had incorrectly entered 200,000 in here. This was supposed to be 2 million. Um, so when the T account updated after making that change, the T account here in the billings account correctly shows $2,500,000 as the balance in the billings account. That's going to go here. And so the cost in excessive billings is zero. So essentially, at the end of the job, there would be one other entry that you would make. You would debit the CIP account 2.5 million, debit the billings account 2.5 million, so that the net balance here is zero. I didn't bother making that entry, but at the end of uh, a job it is appropriate to, to clear out those two accounts because the job's done. Okay, if in any given year it happened that the billings account was greater than the balance in the construction and process account, if, if that's the case of course this number here would be negative and you wouldn't want to show a negative inventory number. So instead what you would do is you would show under current liabilities of the balance sheet billings on construction and process in excessive cost. But in each of the three years here, it turned out that our costs were in excess of our, I'm sorry, our construction process was in excess of our, our billings account. So we had a, a net inventory uh, position. Now, if this were accounted for as a completed contract rather than a percentage of completion basis, what would happen is these first journal entries here would remain exactly unchanged. The only difference is there would not be a journal entry that looks like this at the end of each year. Instead what would happen is you would recognize the revenue on the job in one fell swoop at the end of the job contract. So what you would have is you would have no revenue recognized in 2014 or job costs, none in 2015, and in 2016 you would recognize all the revenue earned on the job, which is what, 2.5 million? 2,500,000. And you would recognize at that time all the job cost. And let's see, our job cost was 600,000 plus 835,000 plus 635,000, 665,000, or in total 2.1 million. So you would recognize 2.1 million in cost of construction recognize four hundred thousand dollars worth of profit. So the total profit, the total revenue, the total cost of construction, total gross profit recognized across the three year period of time is the same. Let's just go up here and sum across so that you'll see. That's the three-year total right there of what we report on the income statement under percentage of completion. That matches exactly with what we report in 2016 if we account for this under completed contract method. The difference is that the revenue hits the income statement or, or the profit hits the income statement in one big lump sum in the year in which the job is completed under completed contract, whereas it's recognized gradually over the over the life of the job according to the degree of progress made on the job under the percentage of completion method.